flip that script. That's where the guest gets to ask the host a question. I don't know what you're going to ask. This is a tough one. Okay, welcome back to Flip That Script. Now, I got two newbies here for me. Usually it's my man Gene Rossi that's doing it, but I'll start with you, Judge. Flip the Script is where the host is always asking a question on shows of the guests, but the guests rarely get to ask the host a question. So here's where I'm going to ask you, Judge Birmingham from Texas of the Roy Oliver fame and other cases, presiding judge, flip that script on me. <laughs> All right, my question to you is, uh, I, I am of the opinion, as I think some are, in death penalty cases, that the facts of the case are the single most important factor that drive jury verdicts. Uh, more so than mitigation, more so than criminal history, it is always the facts and particular circumstances of that offense. Do you agree with that or disagree and why? No, I, I agree with that completely. I mean, the more viscerally reactive the jury is from an emotional standpoint, and as a prosecutor, when I had the cases like pouring gasoline on somebody and lighting them on fire or some really torturous act, it was the facts of that particular gruesomeness of the murder or senselessness of the murder that drove all the way through to the penalty phase of those cases. And the mitigation information, I, I mean, I, I think that many times the witnesses did not come across, at least to the point where it dispelled the idea of the horror of the actual facts of what occurred to that victim and the collateral consequences to the, the victim's family, especially when you got the victim impact testimony. Does that make sense to you, Judge, in your experience? Yeah, that's always what I thought. You have a guy commit a heinous crime with little criminal history. Well, that wasn't, uh, that didn't usually pan out well for him versus a guy who committed a crime that was somehow justifiable or the facts and circumstances weren't there with really, really bad criminal history. And, uh, you know, that, that always worked out well for him as well. So, yeah, that's, that's my thought. I'm just curious to see how you felt based on your experience up there in New Jersey and also your vast experience uh, over the last 30 years or so. Okay, great. Now, listen, Jennifer, we've been on before, but we've never flipped that script. So flip that script on me. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of a 180 and ask a lighter question. I love hearing stories from you, Bob, uh, both as a prosecutor and a defense lawyer. So I want to hear your best world's dumbest criminal story. Oh, my, about, you know, I've talked about this before, and, and there's so many, Jennifer, to choose from. But the one that was always the funniest to me was a trying an armed robbery shooting case. And it was a really tough identification. We believed we got the right guy, but it was going to be tough. It was a flash thing. It happened. The guy wasn't really 100% confident. And he kept saying the only thing he could truly identify was that the guy had an eight ball jacket. Uh, that was one of those old 1980s jackets with a rip in the front pocket. You cannot make it up. In the middle of the trial, the defendant walks into the courtroom with an eight ball jacket with a rip on the front pocket. And I, I, I was just a young kid. I didn't know what to do, so I told the sheriff's officer, seize that jacket. And the defense lawyer was, like, pulling the guy, and, and, and I was trying to get the sheriff's officer to pull him. They were kind of wishboning the guy, but we got the jacket, and we got it admitted. That had to be – it's one of many funny stories that happened in the courtroom. Thank you for asking a funny question, and thank you for Law & Crime Network for doing Flip That Script. Listen, we got some courtroom testimony in the Wilburn case. Let's just throw to it real quick, and I'll come back with my two great guests. And thanks again, guys.